Mention automotive icons and people immediately jump to the Mustang, the Beetle, and the 911. Meanwhile, Toyota has been quietly cranking out the Corolla since 1967, and with more than 40 million sold in the last 50 years, it's the best-selling nameplate in the world. Now, half a century's worth of best-selling sales just demands commemoration, so for 2017, Toyota has offered this 50th anniversary edition. Of course, that's not the only change. This year, all Corollas benefit from a reworked front end with LEDs, a standard backup camera, upgraded upholstery, and the biggest change for 2017, the Toyota Safety Sense P system. Now, this adds a shocking suite of safety tech like lane departure warning and intervention, auto high beams, and forward collision warning and mitigation with auto braking and pedestrian detection. Add in standard adaptive crews, and that's a list that most of the competition just can't manage. Now this 50th anniversary edition gets a little bit of extra style with unique 17 inch wheels and black cherry trim and stitching inside to match this black cherry paint you see. You also get some special badging to let everybody know that you spent a little bit extra on your Corolla. Now, what I wish Toyota had spent a little bit more money on is the engine. Now I know, this is a Corolla. It's not about performance. Hear me out, that's not what I'm saying. The base engine here is a 1.8 liter inline four, and that's good for 132 horsepower and 128 pound feet of torque. And if gas mileage is what you're concerned with, you're gonna be pretty happy. It's EPA rated at 36 highway and 28 city for a combined rating of 32, but real world, I'm getting closer to 26 actually. The problem is it's loud and it's always sounding like it's struggling and it seemingly makes like no power below 4,000 RPM. And listen, you just, you don't need to be an enthusiast to want an engine that you don't have to rev the hell out of in order to get going. And you shouldn't have to be forced to spend 40 or $50,000 on a car in order to get an engine that doesn't sound like it's gonna shake itself apart at any moment. Now, a big part of the problem is the continuously variable transmission that comes standard here. To be fair, it's not the worst one that I've ever experienced, but it, it is up there. It drones loudly and it can't seem to get the engine up into the power band quickly enough. And that means that the zero to 60 time is going to be close to 10 seconds. And that is about as slow as it gets in 2017. Now this 50th anniversary edition is based on the SE trim and that's the sporty trim. Now with that you get a sport mode and that'll make the CVT simulate shift points as, as well as uh, tighten up the steering and the accelerator but to be honest it's a, it's a minor change at best. The good news is, this 50th anniversary is nearly a top tier trim and it's still only $24,497 even with stupidly expensive options like $400 for a protective film on the hood, $100 for a tablet holder, and $80 for the rear bumper rubber. Go with the top of the line XSE trim and you're looking at about the same price, trading some aesthetics for things like heated power seats and upgraded audio and navigation thanks to the Entune Premium package rather than Entune Plus that you get here. Now, if you don't want any of that, you can get into a base LE trim for under 20 grand and you're still going to get all the safety systems and a backup camera and those LEDs and, and that's not bad. And for another 1600 you can add the premium package and that'll get you 16 inch alloys and the Entune Plus system and a moonroof. And really, if you don't care about driving dynamics at all, that's pretty attractive. Of course, at that point, you're getting close to $22,000. So why not just jump up to the SE for a little bit more? There you're gonna get things like a color matched exterior trim and a rear spoiler, a leather steering wheel and sport seats with a sportier gauge cluster, plus keyless ignition and entry and upgraded headlights. Now that's all great, but the real reason to jump up to at least the SE trim is the brakes. 
Everything below the SC gets rear drums, and despite the Corolla's rather svelte 2,800 pound curb weight, the stopping distance from 60 miles an hour is around 130 feet, and that is the worst in the segment. Now, SE and XSE trims, they both get rear discs, and those do help a little bit, but it's still gonna have the longest stopping distance of all the competition. That alone would cause me to look elsewhere for a compact sedan, but if you have your heart set on a Corolla, those rear discs are important. Otherwise, there's nothing but good things to report. This interior is really roomy and looks great, especially here in the SE trim. Even the back seat provides enough room for adults, and while the 13 cubic feet in the trunk isn't going to break any records, it's average for the class and has a nice big opening and a low deck for loading and unloading. Steering is light and tight with a 17.8 foot turning radius, and the Corolla can boast a 5 star safety rating with top scores in every category except for the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's small overlap front impact test. It's basically uh, running into something like a tree or a guardrail up front on the driver's side at, at 40 miles an hour. Now that got the Institute's second worst score of marginal. So take that into account when you're shopping as well. Okay, you want some smaller critiques? Well, I really love this whole layout here, the simplicity of it, especially keeping the climate controls as just a few simple buttons down here, rather than, you know, burying them in the infotainment system. However, every time I go to use the tuning knobs for the radio, I end up accidentally hitting the screen because they're too close, and then you open up a different menu here. Also, I can't stand this new trend in belt lines for vehicles. It just it looks unfinished to me. In the end, the Corolla represents a hell of a good deal with some strong caveats. In a segment that includes the Civic, the Mazda 3, the Focus, and the Jetta, it's kind of hard to make a bad decision. There's really no way around it. If you want a compact sedan, you have some test driving to do. Hey, thanks for watching. For more information on the 2017 Corolla, just click the link in the description. You can head over to cargurus.com and read my full review. And for videos on some of the competition, just subscribe to the channel.